Nobody smokes anymore Well I guess I'll be the only one that has any fun Cause nobody smokes anymore No, 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 nobody smokes anymore Nobody smokes anymore Nobody smokes anymore Southwest. Let's do it. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I want to talk about baseball. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I just came from a baseball game. The Texas Playboys is a Sandlot team here in Austin, and I played in the seventh inning stretch, so that's why I'm decked out in baseball gear. I still love it. Yeah, honestly, it's like you know, 15 years now I've been doing it, and every time I get to see friends, you know, a ton of friends. There's people from Australia, UK, like shit, like everywhere. They're all here. Um, yeah, I still like it. I'm like old, so <laughs> the idea of playing 10 shows in three days is a little intimidating now. I'm like very tired. <laughs> But yeah, there's a there's a few others I really like. I go to Newport every year, and El Cosmico, the Transpecos Festival is probably my favorite festival in the world. That festival, if you guys get the chance, it's the best. It's so wonderful, it's out in the desert, and it's like 1,500 people, it's small, but incredible bands every year, and I host this family band set um, that's like closes out Saturday every year, and it's really fun. Also, I don't think music festivals are generally the most ideal situation to see music. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of what makes South by Nice, is that it's all in venues that are made to see music in, instead of like a massive stage next to another stage also playing music. You know, like, and everyone's sweaty and fucking drunk. Like, I don't know. No, I just started writing tunes, and mostly it's just because I was cooped up and like playing by myself. And I wrote them kind of with the idea like that they should be fleshed out with just me. You know what I mean? Like not have, I wasn't envisioning ever putting a band on the thing. Um, and so that's why the record's so stripped down. But you know, like the grand scheme of things, I love talking about like the differences and the records and like where I'm at in my life. But it's just, I'm gonna be doing this for as long as I'm alive, you know? And all the records are gonna be different and I'll just keep doing them. You know, like there's just gonna be, I don't know, hopefully like a hundred more, <laughs> you know, before I die, like a lot. I'm gonna do a lot of records and like, I think every time it's a chance to explore something else that I haven't explored. Texas Piano Man was like all about having fun and it was kind of a party. The tour was a party, the record was a party. We all like got super dolled up, like white tuxedo and like, you know, and this, this record is just a different thing. It's like very chill very quiet and very like focused um, and yeah the songs a lot of them are super long and don't have a chorus you know <laughs> like they're just kind of like stream of conscious poetry kind of vibe and I don't know I just I was really interested in that just like not trying to make any tunes that were even remotely going to be like oh this will be the radio tune or whatever you know like just I just wanted to make songs that I thought sounded cool and not really stress about like where they could go. I think people appreciate it. And it, I, I don't know, if nothing else, then I think they feel it. Like even if somebody doesn't read that shit on Instagram and see like the whole backstory of it, I think they can feel that something is like, that it's real. Like something, it's coming from somewhere that is like real, you know? And yeah, I don't know. I think it's just a season in my life like, with Texas Piano Man, it was like a character. Like I was in character, and I was very intentionally not like breaking character. You know, the shows and the songs and all of it was just like, I would put on the suit and I would feel like a superhero. <laughs> you know, like, and go out and do that. And this is like a little bit more me. Um, and so I just feel like it's pertinent to talk about some of that stuff. And all these songs, you know, a lot of the songs are about my kids or for my kids. You know, like, I don't know, they're just, it's a deeper, sort of deeper uh, body of work than the last record in some ways, yeah. <laughs>
that like touring that record was a fucking absolute shit show because it was just like a huge nonstop party, you know, like like moving. I mean, every night we would get like a dozen yellow roses and like throw them out to the audience, and the shows were like very rocking. And we were playing clubs, you know, like I also try and change up where we're playing as much as possible. You know, on this record, I'll be playing only theaters and listening rooms, other than South by obviously. Um, and on the last record, it was very intentionally like, we're gonna play rock clubs, and we're gonna be like a rock band, you know, and like put on a big show. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting to like do different things. I just get bored with all of it. And like, whatever it is with this record, I feel like I can get super into the nuance of like a guitar part that just has like a cool syncopation or something. Like, I'll just focus on that and keep doing it and be like, oh, that sounds cool, I'm enjoying it. And focus on like whatever its strength is. And sometimes its strength is not like big party music. You know, sometimes its strength is like patience. You know, like there's like a, an inordinate amount of time before it gets to the payoff. And that makes the payoff stronger or something, I don't know. Just music can do so many different things. You know, it's like, can be super powerful in different ways. For being a for being a very chill and kind of dark record, like, or people have said like, oh, you're sad music or whatever. Like, for being that, it is deeply optimistic in a way that none of the other stuff has been. Like, I think a lot of the songs are very hopeful. You know, like, they're chill and they're kind of somber and there's some complicated shit in them. But I think the like end feeling of the record is like kind of a positive, hopeful feeling. Are they trying to be in the interview? I really like it. <laughs> I hope they're in. Will, will you guys actually just stay in the whole interview, please? No, will you please just go back there and do the rest of the interview? <laughs> just if you could just hang for the rest of the interview, I think it'd be really good. Just like sorry, just, I didn't. I like, just right, the whole time. Yeah, just the whole time. Just stare. Spike the lens. Stare straight into the camera and just be there for the rest of the interview. Okay. I think it'd be Whoever you are, like, I'm, I'm just okay. here. Yeah, 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 that's, I think it's, are you guys cool with this? I think it's fucking hilarious and good. Okay. Yeah. I do whatever you want. Okay, good, good. Where are you guys from? Germany. Okay, we're in Germany. Hamburg. Oh, I love Who Hamburg. Are you? Why is I'm, anyone interviewing you? I don't know. I ask myself this question every day. I'm Robert Ellis. I'm playing hey, next hey. door at the Mohawk in a little bit. Oh, cool. And, um, so we are the guest list right now, yeah? You're coming. Yeah, You're please. fucking coming, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what music are you doing? Uh, it's like it's boring singer songwriter folk music. I hate that. Yeah, me too. I love to come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're just interviewing for a uh, magazine. Sorry, yeah. and, and I didn't know how wide angle it is, so I tried to do my little. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, guess, I guess it was wide angle, right? I'm on an 85 mil, so I like got you guys. Uh, <laughs> he captured the whole setup too. Like when you guys were pre gaming and planning, he captured all that because it's super wide. <laughs> but, but honestly, this is exact, because we're both photographers. I, on a way, I felt guilty. On the other way, I thought it might be funny. <laughs> So, I'm being super <laughs> earnest and serious yeah. and just talking and then you guys are just like <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay, let me let me no get the fuck out of here. Let me do my job. You're so relaxed, that's the most important thing you ever It's South by Southwest. How can you possibly keep a thought in your head for one second? Yeah, it comes out in May. Um I don't know. I'm gonna tour a little bit on it, and I have more videos coming. Um, and honestly, now that you say that, like, it is all deeply personal shit. Like, the next video that's coming out for another single is like I shot the video with my two sons, and it's just me and them on like beautiful black and white, you know, like super wide anamorphic cinematic. Just like there's no narrative. To the video it's just me and my kids for the whole thing um, and it's cool and part of it is just like selfish like I I want to make a cool video that people like but I also I'm like well I've got a little money to make a music video and how cool is this gonna be to have like a really beautiful documentation of me and my kids at this point in our lives 
I guess like this record and the videos and all of it, I'm just realizing now that all of it is like just taking a little photograph of wherever I'm at right now and being able to look back on it 10 years from now and be like, oh wow, that was a moment, I don't know. And just like holding on to a moment or like giving it some structure to stand on and like, I don't know, just not forget about it. Honestly, the whole record is me. I, I wake up super early and I, I don't want to. It's not like a brag thing. I just fucking wake up at 5 a.m. Like most days, my kids get up at seven. I get up around five and I like for two hours have coffee and like maybe do a little work, play a little music just by myself. I like to get up before the sun comes up. Um, and most of this record was written in that time, in that like twilight zone. Um, and I just, yeah, this is like a picture of that, you know, just like that, just total stillness where nobody else is awake, the world is not awake. You know, like outside it's just like no cars on the street and just like this just very somber, sort of peaceful, still vibe. Um, and that's the whole, kind of the whole record. Um, and it's one of my favorite, and it's, it's morning and night, you know? It's like a lot of my favorite music um, I listen to a ton of jazz, and especially solo piano or duo records. I really love Bill Evans, like Jim Hall. Um, there's a lot of records that they don't have drums. They're just like intimate two people records. And I, for the last 10, 15 years, have been, every night when I go to sleep, I put in earbuds, and I generally put on one of those kind of records, and I fall asleep to music. And there's a few records that I've done it for 10 years, every night I've listened to the same album and I know it inside and out. And there's something just so soothing about it. And it's calm and it's chill, but there's also a quality to it that's like, at least with Bill Evans, like there's this improvisational, um, unexpected quality that like, you, you can't listen to a song that you want to sing along to when you go to sleep, you know what I mean? Like, it'll keep you up. So like, there's something about that music that I was like, oh, it's like music made for going to sleep to. And that's kind of the headspace I was in with this. Chet Baker's the same way. Like, I love that music. It's just so patient and soft. And when we made the record, the bass player that was with me, we had a little meeting beforehand. We went through charts and we like talked about how we're gonna play it and stuff. And I was just like, the main thing is, I never want us to get over like this volume. You know, it all has to just be like, whenever we want to get excited, like do it in a different way than volume. You know, like if you want to express dynamic, do it in some other way. Cause I, I just don't think loudness is the, the strength of the record, you know? And I, in my experience playing solo for this long, you know, I've done it on all the records, gone out and open for everybody's solo. It's not about volume, it's about intensity. Like, people pay attention to you, not when you're loud, but when you're intense. Sometimes that means being very quiet. And sometimes it means being silent and then saying something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just a different kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting what gets people's attention. Like, yelling could get their attention, but also, like, stopping for a really uncomfortable amount of time and then being very quiet could get their attention. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is Robert Ellis. Thanks for tuning into Variance Magazine.